been wandering down this particular spiritual journey since 2000 and 2010 when I survived my near-death experience and that had ultimately awakened my mind and my spirituality to this particular path and it inspired me so greatly that I started to realize that there is a divine creator there is there are angels and spirits that exist so this person her first name, I won't say her last name, but her last name was obviously fake anyway. So her first name was Kayla, I believe, or Lila, or, or something along the lines. But she had invoked upon me for my services by responding to a particular ad of mine. We had spoken on and off for a, a duration of several days, and I decided it was a Monday morning. And once again, she had lived an hour and 15, hour and 20 minutes for me so I decided to go down to her house and mind you this was like seven eight o'clock in the morning I got down there and right before I go anywhere I always always investigate the surrounding area which you could do that by surrounding the uh, researching the surrounding areas of what it looks like through Google Maps or MapQuest so I done just that and it showed that the point of destination was this countryside out in the middle of nowhere and it looked like a predominantly upper class neighborhood with white like typical white picket fence like you see in the Hollywood films in this case this was at a barn it had a barn some goats and sheep cows around horses around and it was like a white picket fence. I said, okay, cool. well, you know, this is going to be great for me. And obviously these people you could trust and they look like they've got money to afford for professional services because this is a professional service that they're invoking upon, you know. I myself, I'm very much a serious practitioner for those who know me and I don't go to this barn and to the left side of me, there was a house right next to the barn. And at this point, I realized that this point of where Google Maps was taking me was apparently not the correct address. I mean, everything matched up, everything lined up. And for some reason, you know, to the, the, the actual house that was, that Google Maps had taken me to, it was this, pretty good size house mind you and there were it was under reconstruction there were a crew of construction workers working on it uh, reassembling everything making it more of a, of a better shape than what it was I mean what it was before was was like it seemed like it was like falling apart to a degree like the roof was collapsed in and caved in and it was a barn so I, I drove past them I absolutely I, I ignored them in retrospect I did not think to speak to them because they what would they know right because they're the construction workers and they're just there to fulfill their duty the purpose their job and get done at the end of the day and get out you know so I proceeded to go a couple feet up the driveway and it was this lavish barn like like I said like you see in like a typical Hollywood movie or something so there was this barn and it had a, a older gentleman in it and one other guy so I got out of the car you know I introduced myself and I told them that if they could possibly help me I would certainly appreciate it I would really appreciate it. I would be grateful because you know I got hired by this client to come out and do this metaphysical job for her and Google Maps has taken me to this house like this address where the barn was and I had a feeling that like that was <laughs> that was not the house so they look confused at first and okay one other thing mind you my hair was up it was tied up in a bun it was tied up in a ponytail and what I was wearing was not casual it was very business formal attire like how you see me typically you know with the all black 
light dress slacks, my TUK creepers, the the dress shoes, you know. I was wearing a, a black vest and my, my black dress shirt. All right, you know. And I showed him the exact text messages, the conversation that we were exchanging between each other off and on for several days and everything checks out. So I decided, I listened to my mind and I thought, okay, I'm gonna go across the street where the exact photograph of Google Maps had showed to me and maybe this will clarify it. Maybe this is the house. Maybe I had to go right across the street because a lot of times Google Maps is not always 100% accurate. And I got up to the house, this gentleman, this older gentleman, he was perplexed, he was confused as to what I was doing there, who I was. And at first he'd give me this third degree, confused emotions, and it was a bit awkward at first. And I explained to him the same thing I did to the the people in a barn. And they looked like they lived there. They looked like they were the, the owners there. They had the, the whole horse riding ensemble and you know, like people working in a barn, I, I don't know, forgive me. Well, whatever that's called, you know, I'm not too knowledgeable for it. I mean, I was raised on a farm, but anyway, after a while, after explaining, clarifying the situation of what I was there for, and I was lost, thank God he didn't call the cops on me or anything. He ended up directing me to the house right across the street of where I was. I said, no way, right? So. I decided to take a turn. Okay, so right next door, literally to this barn and this house that was decomposed and being rebuilt. I mean, it was a nice house. It was being rebuilt. But the house right next to it was this huge field for a mansion. I mean, it was a literal mansion. Like, it looked like a huge mansion, all right? So I, I got up there. I, I pulled up to the driveway. I put my car in park. I got out of the car. And... I knocked on a door, and it was a glass door separating between myself and this woman in the driveway. She had two dogs running around, and they were absolutely growling and barking at me. It was already a negative scenario. So going into, like, going up to the house, knocking on a door, this woman had stared at me from inside of the house. And I thought to myself, all right, so what? What, what? what are we doing here, you know? I was confused out of my mind. And she stared at me for a while, for a couple of minutes, and then she just, like that, she just disappeared. And I thought, this is like, this is getting really strange to me. You know, this is like an episode of one of those things like Catfish or something, you know? I mean, thank God I had my gun with me and everything. In case if this person was like a psychopath or some serial killer or something, I would have been able to defend myself. And I thought to myself, okay, so I dabble, I'm experienced into the occult and witchcraft and I keep myself protected through my archangels and spiritual deities and things that I work with. And it's all good, you know? So I pull out of there and I decided just to go back to the barn and sure enough, it was a crew of full of white people. I don't want to turn this into a, a race card kind of a thing, but this is like where it's ultimately headed towards, you know? And for appropriate reasons, I decided to give this a second attempt. And this time, if I fail, I am going to go right back home empty-handed. And as much of a disappointment as that is, if that's what it had to come down to be, then that's what it had to come down to be. So, and I figured I had other clients lined up, so this isn't the end of the road for me. This is just only the beginning, and this person was my first metaphysical client of mine. And so I got to the barn. There was, old, there was a middle-aged woman in there. So I asked of her, I explained to her the same thing that I explained to the gentleman before, the first time of arrival, and she basically told me the same thing that, you know, there's nobody by that name there and if anything it was that house that was decomposed and I thought to myself okay so this is 
this is one of those rare metaphysical paranormal experiences where, you know, like I've heard it on a rare, rare occasion where the spirit of the dead would actually pretend to be alive and they would call somebody to bring them out to this and this house to haunt them, to kill them, what have you, you know, or just a spirit on the other side seeking help, whatever, you know, something, you know. So I got up to, to go in a car. I had my dog with me because she goes everywhere with me. Pulling out of the, getting ready, like pulling out of the driveway and then the construction people actually had their truck, their big old pickup truck. Oh no, it wasn't them. It was the, uh, it was a woman in a house in a big mansion. I was telling you about. It turns out that she's the landlord of that of that entire property. And I thought, okay, so what do we got going on here now, right? So she blocks me in in the driveway, preventing me from getting out with her black SUV Escalade, you know some fancy rich car and I thought well shoot so I get out of the car and I explain you know the construction people at this point they confront me ask me how suspicious it was that I come in here twice and I explained the situation to them and I finally explained to the landlord oh my intention my purpose of being there and mind you everybody is white there's no Asian, there's no black, there's no Mexican. Soon enough, the landlord, this is a Karen at this point. She's the one to actually call the cops. I mean, she told me that police were coming out to question me, to interrogate, investigate me. I said, well, yeah, well, great. Well, here, here's my luck, right? Here's my luck. And to make an honest living, and this is my job, okay, and I get somebody to, my first time in my life ever to, in my 30 years of being alive, three decades of being alive on this earth, and I finally met a Karen. And I'm not, I am not enthralled, I am not ecstatic, and at this point I was a bit confused, at the same time pissed off. And had this person would have answered the door, and me dressed as formal as I was, and in, instead of assuming the narratives and jumping to conclusions she could have just straight up asked me like what's my intention what am i doing there and i i forgot to bring my video camera and i bring my camera everywhere and i i did not think or expect something like this to happen but i always say expect the unexpected anyway so she ended up calling the cops on me not less than 10 minutes later they had arrived you know i had I, at the time, I had my metaphysical business, my decal, covering almost the entirety of the back window of my car. And, okay, so finally there was a minority, there was finally a black guy who was a sergeant of that police department of that particular county in that city. So they had asked me to open my trunk. You know, they look through the car. They they see my Ouija board out on a dashboard, and it was interesting. Like the reaction was priceless. They asked me to open a trunk. I told them there's nothing there. So they opened a the trunk. There was nothing there. And I explained to them just like I explained to the landlord of my purpose, my intention, what I'm what I am doing there, and honestly, I am lost. You know, I showed him the text messages between myself and my client that they had invoked upon me. They had hired me to come out and do some uh, reversal for hexes and curses. So I had done just that. And finally, finally the landlord asked me of their name, so I had given it to them to her and to the police officers so the police officers end up telling me that the house that I was looking for was actually right next door to the landlord that big old mansion I was like okay okay so you know they 
they try to threaten me at first saying like well we're gonna follow you and you to follow us I mean they had like two squad cars in front of me and one behind me and they had mentioned to me that if everything does not check out if these people don't answer the door then I would be automatically arrested and I thought to me, I thought to myself like what do you have you know so I followed them down to their house and to my surprise it was the house right next to the mansion so I got there and knocked on the door like I try to text these people I try to call them so many times and finally just getting up to the door I knocked on the door nobody answered for about five minutes and then the younger the white guy the police officer he walked around the back and he called out to his sergeant he said this woman is smoking a cigarette out in the backyard and he had told my client my first name and they said like yeah everything checks out I'm in a clear and I'm supposed to be there for you know whatever you know like I guess they never mentioned about it. so after a while they, they all smiled and shake hands and I was like what the hell you know and this is a story that I was almost rested just because of an entitled upper-class Karen and they were not expecting to see you know at the time like a clean shaven like I didn't have my mustache or anything it was like I always kept my goatee but for me to dress in my metaphysical like not metaphysical my all black formal business attire just like the ones you see in my videos this entire situation did not have to escalate the way that it had had only if the entitled Karen would have asked me directly confronted me speak to me on an intellectual human level instead of ignoring me at the door thinking that I'm some sort of drug dealer or possible burglar in this this town it looked like nobody ever goes out there nobody bothers anybody everyone keeps to themselves just like a rural rural countryside quiet peaceful serene everyone keeps to themselves but this entire situation could have been de-escalated and did not have to reach to the to the pinnacle point that it had had only if they assessed the situation you know actually taking the time to look at my messages and honestly at first like that entitled Karen that person that had no zero to no interest to hearing about my side of the story of what I was doing there she said oh, I was suspicious you know like <laughs> okay you know I'm lost I'm lost and I'm asking for directions and I was assertive about that you know I was very professional very calm collected and very casual you know but come to find out and this is why that whenever I have clients anymore I always have them to sign for my clients and myself to date the contract to put the date and the dollar amount as well as uh, the signature I started making contracts because once again what it would have turned out to be a hundred fifty to two hundred dollar job ended up to being you know they end up giving me twenty dollars for gas money and a part of it is my fault because I should have been assertive with them I should have straight up told them how much it was going to be in total and I decided to give them a, a pretty huge discount because I spent about a couple of hours with them I driven an hour and a half drive to go up to them and I pulled out a lot of abundance my resources my time and everything adds up I mean if you expect quality products or quality service you're going to have to pay for to receive that quality products or that quality service and if you expect to pay cheap then you only expect to receive cheap quality 
and or not so professional quality. In this case, I decided to do everything in total for a hundred dollars, and still to this very day, they still owe me eighty dollars. You know what? I've just let it go for now, and you know, I just this is why, like, if you are an artist or entrepreneur, you own your own business. What you have to do to safeguard yourself is if you got a Cash App, if you've got a Venmo or whatever, PayPal, whatever they have, you know, which I have all, all those, and you have to be one to collect the money first. And then upon arrival, before doing your services or anything, you've got to both you and a third party to sign the contract of agreement. Which that way, you know, you're not liable for anything. And yeah, so I got the cops called on me in a predominantly white neighborhood and a Karen freaked out of her mind and a paranoid over me. Almost got arrested had they not answered the door. And their reason for not answering the door, like for, for answering my text messages, my phone calls, was because I went straight to voicemail. It was because they had overslept and they didn't go to sleep till like really late that night, the night before. And I thought to myself, wow, you know, so. And these people were talking about paying me what they had owed me the next day or that same day and I never got my money. So, I mean, that, that was an experience in itself. This is why I particularly do not trust people. I don't trust the living. And it's harder than hell in a, a needle in a haystack to earn my trust. Once you get my trust, then, you know, like, in conclusion of this video, my name is Cody Gremlin. Thank you all everyone so much for watching. Please subscribe, like, share, and especially support this channel through my Patreon. And share my videos with others. Give us a like. Leave your comments below. If you had a particular experience with a Karen yourself or like someone entitled, please, by all means, comment on this video. Leave your feedback. Share with me your story. I don't care how long it is. I might just take your story and do like reddit does you know like read your story out loud i'll turn your story into a live video and i honestly mean that you know i want to hear about your guys story i hate talking about myself and my stories and i don't care about myself as much as i care about each and every one of you guys so please write to me your stories please you know give this video a like share my videos with others and I don't know, this is like my first time in my life, and that was uncomfortable for me. That was annoying, to say the least, that I actually was a victim of racism myself, you know? I mean, you hear about, like, Mexican and, like, Hispanic community and black people, the African, uh, African American community, Native Americans, but you seldom hear about us as Orientals, as, as Asians. I don't know. I don't know how that makes me feel, you know? I mean, it's bad enough that my people during World War II were imprisoned in concentration camps. And if you come to think about it, like, every culture of the world had their fair share of atrocities, travesties, and unfortunate circumstances and situations. Poverty, death, war, famine, what have you, you know? But, I mean, this is 2020. Uh, you know, unfortunately, there's a lot of narrow-minded, intolerant people in the world. And Anyways, I'm, I'm done talking about it. It's just going to piss me off even more. So, I absolutely hate racism. I hate sexism. I hate social injustices and uh, animal cruelty and abandonment and a lot of this other shit. So, my name is Cody Gremlin. Thank you so much for watching. And I swear to God, like, if somebody were to come up to me and talk about me being Japanese and everything, I'm going to go off. Uh, I'm going to go crazy, you know. Like, somebody's going to get, like, punched out. Anyway, see ya.